say, do you have any water spinning tablets? It looks like I'm out. Yeah, I think so. Let me check. Thanks. Hey, what if we could bottle clean water? We could sell it for a dime at the Camp Breeze. You could be rich and finally buy that lantern the troop wanted. I think you're a little too dehydrated. Anyway, who would buy free water? I guess you're right. I mean, people at the Camp Breeze already have their canteens. Now you're thinking straight. Cheers. Hi, welcome to Star's Musings. I'm Mr. Dyer, and today we're going to talk about something that could arguably be the most important thing to take to a camp out, especially a Boy Scout, with the exception of Scout Spirit, and that is the canteen. As always, I'd like to thank my wife and family for their unconditional support. I'd like to thank my students. We started school up. It's been going really well. I had some really awesome lessons so far. I'm fortunate enough that I get to be in the same classroom with my students. Um, I think I have one or two students that might be going to remote learning. But overall, this has actually been a really good start of the year for me. And I'm, I've been pretty excited and pretty pleased about it. Um, so I thank my students for constantly engaging me and pushing me to learn more and be better and uh, just to get more information out there to them that they could use, readily use, um, not just have facts spinning around their head, but how they can make connections. And today we're going to do that a little bit. I'm going to um, talk about the connections of the canteen and why it's so important. Now, obviously, it seems pretty important, right? Well, I'm going to try to go a little bit more in depth than just showing you, hey, here's a bottle to take water. I'd also like to thank my viewers, you, for taking the time and watching my video. Thank you to my subscribers for subscribing. Please share my videos, help this channel grow. Uh, if you're new to my channel, check out my other videos. For the most part, they've been Civil War focused. I'm taking a shift away from that for the time being and focusing on uh, Civil, uh, I'm sorry, a Boy Scout impression that I'm building for my sons and I. As I get new artifacts, uh, I'm making new videos and trying to uh, do research on it. So anyhow, let's get to the, the meat of it. The canteen. If you were a Boy Scout, chances are you had some type of water bottle. I was a Boy Scout in the 90s and into the 2000s. And things kind of shifted even when I was a Boy Scout. And it's kind of cool looking at the material culture of the Boy Scouts of America because it moves so fast. There's so much in the old catalogs and they just kind of uh, develop it over a period of time and it grows. So when I was a Cub Scout in the 90s, um, bottled water wasn't a thing yet. So if you're a young person, you don't know a time where there wasn't bottled water you could just go buy. That, that was kind of crazy. And even today, it still kind of blows my mind that people do that. Sorry, another tangent. But bottled water wasn't a thing. Um, so you had to have some type of canteen uh, of, or some type of water bag that you could use. In the 90s, when I was a Cub Scout, plastic canteens were pretty much the way to go, or military surplus canteens. Military surplus canteens, I actually have an example I'm going to show you, because early on in the Boy Scouts history in the 1930s, they used military surplus canteens. Um, in fact, the Boy Scouts of America even encouraged it in their handbooks to go to Bannerman's catalogs and etc. and buy military surplus. So it was perfectly okay. It was sanctioned and encouraged and everybody kind of did it. And it was a little bit cheaper way of doing things, right? And when you're a young kid and you're supposed to fund your own way, you need affordable options. So anyhow, in the 90s, you had to have some type of canteen or water bottle. And they were, tend to be made out of plastic. Even in the 2000s, uh, military shifted away from the aluminum canteens um, and they went to the plastic canteens for the most part. It's, it's lighter. Uh, so metal historically has been the material used 
to carry water because it was sturdy. And you could either do steel canteens, tin canteens, going back to the American Civil War, and in the 1900s, aluminum. Now, aluminum, if you're not familiar with the history of it, at one point, aluminum was actually more valuable than gold. And it didn't take very long for scientists to figure out a way to produce aluminum in a cost-effective way where the price of aluminum just plummeted very rapidly, so just about anybody could afford it. Uh, aluminum was a material that was used in the handles of straight razors called scales. So if you've also watched some of my channels, you know I use straight razors. And you can kind of date a straight razor by that material because it was only really used and popular for a short period of time. It was a symbol of wealth. And it was during the Art Nouveau period. So you'd see all like the flowers and the, the curves, etc. So aluminum has a place in history and we still use aluminum today. Um, it's a mass produced metal. You know, pop cans have aluminum. All right, so I've collected various canteens for my son's and my impression. Now I've been focusing on the 1920s and 1930s. One reason it's a lot easier to find material culture of that period that's affordable. There are scout collectors out there that if it's like early 1900s, like 1910s to 1920, uh, it's pretty valuable because that's the start of scouting here in the United States. So 1920s to 1940s gives me a, a range of material culture where I can pick from that's more affordable for me to use and I can use original artifacts or at least collect original artifacts to get information from and perhaps make some reproduction stuff such as covers, um, cloth covers. Uh, they, they tend to be brittle or they tend to be uh, stretched or torn or tattered, etc. Especially since I'm going on the cheap here, uh, I'm not going for like new pristine stuff. I can make repairs to that kind of stuff or just completely make reproductions. So that's the time period that I'm focusing on. And I actually have some examples of canteens that when I bought them, I didn't know necessarily where they fit in in the timeline. I was kind of confused. We're going to go to the earliest canteens that I have. And that is the very similar to the uh, World War I style canteen. And it's also very similar to the American Civil War canteen. If we take off the snaps, like so, and we pull this guy out, you can see, yeah, beat up, right? Um, that's the shape of it. It has the BSA logo here. It has a screw cap. And even the cap is like a um, aluminum. It has a rubber seal, rubber gasket. There you go, it's the inside. So this style canteen was pretty popular in the 1930s, uh, throughout the entire decade of the 1930s. It really didn't change much. Um, in the 1920s, 1927, I think it is, in the catalog that I have, they start showing it. But in the 1930s is, the, the, is mostly when it was issued. And they issued it in two types. So they have the cotton cloth type. And here you can see the BSA logo. It has Council New York. The other issue of it was the wool cover, which is this one. You can see it nice and clear. Um, this is a great example of it. Even the buttons really aren't too damaged. Same type of cap. Uh, yeah. When we open this one up, you can see the shape a little bit better. I might not be able to open this one up. I can't remember. Some of these are so, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm too afraid to. I don't want to damage the wool cover, but you might be able to see it. There is a flat here, and this was considered an improvement on canteens in the catalogs, that flat so it could sit on your hip. And then over here, it's rounded, it's convex. Note the chain. 
there. And you can kind of note the chain here too. Now this chain is starting to rust. This is like a steel chain. I think this one is an aluminum chain. There's really like no rust on it whatsoever. It also has a slightly different clasp. You see that? It has a wire. And this is the one on had the cloth cover. So I can spin around. And this one is connected on the spout. So I'm sure that helps us date it a little bit more precisely, or at least maybe be more particular about the model of it. Um, this one does not have a flat compared to this one. This one does. So that's the 1930s style canteen. Um, in the 1933 catalog, I think it was, I think it was, they put a military style type aluminum canteen. You could buy this um, from the Boy Scout catalog. And again, you can see how it was put on. <laughs> you can see what's left of like a cork stopper. And it was sold by itself in the catalog. It was not sold with a cover. Now, the one that I, I have here, the example that I have here, did have a wool cover. And it's in really bad shape, as you can tell. Like, it only has one snap and is not a Boy Scout snap. It's just a brass snap. And you can see the webbing. It's kind of a heavy-duty steel. And at first, I, I didn't think this was a Boy Scout cover. Um, I thought maybe it was like a third party type cover, but here, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let's see if I can get in a good light. There is, and yeah, you can kind of see it there, a remnant of the Boy Scout stamp. But in all the catalogs that I have in the 1930s, it I couldn't find the cover for that military canteen. And like I said, I think it was only 1933 catalog that I saw that it was um, even offered the military type canteen. However, there are several years of catalogs that I do not own. So this could have been offered in like the 1934 or 1935 catalog. Um, I, I can't speculate on that. All I know is that the catalogs I do have this was not offered. If you have an answer, please let me know. That'd be pretty cool. I'd appreciate it. Um, the other two examples of canteens that I have are steel. They're galvanized steel. And I bought them. I was really excited because when I bought them, I thought they were the earlier types that was issued in the 1920s. They are not, though. Um, they are called the Junior Canteen and they were the cheaper model of canteens that the Boy Scouts put out that uh, even in the Cub Scouts in 1936 or 39 catalog that I have that specifically is for Cub Scouts, uh, they're offered in there. The Cub Scouts aren't even offered the more expensive aluminum canteens, which I thought that was kind of interesting. I guess in Cub Scouting, you have these young kids, young families, they're just trying to get them involved. Pure speculation, but there you have it. I have two types of canteens. Well, they're the same type of canteen. They're both steel. They both are pretty much identical in design um, and in caps, etc. They have a zinc cap, as you can see. There's no buttons to let these canteens free. It's completely sealed and sewn in. One of these is a wool line, which is even on the cap and it's on the cover. I'm trying to sell this, so if you're actually interested in buying these, uh, feel free. They are, they're, they're rusted inside. I can't use them for my kids unless I, 
uh, line them with beeswax. Um, but they're, they're pretty rough and they're heavy. So they're kind of awkward. And this other one, which is identical, it is a Bear Brand. Bear Brand Canteen. It does not have it labeled on here, but it's on, again, it's a cotton canteen. It's got the metal, metal swivels for the straps. Um, this is a little bit heavier duty in regards to the straps that you see on the aluminum canteen. Maybe because of weight, but I have this one here, this kit cover, which is for the plain aluminum. It's almost in tatters. It's like a cotton, very thin herringbone, but it, it's, it's not in good shape. <laughs> Okay, so there's those canteens. The last canteen that I have for you, I, I do not believe it fits in the 1920s or 30s. I think this is later, probably 1940s, maybe 1950s. Um, it's not in any of the catalogs that I have. It's very similar by looks, but the difference is, is this is like a drum style canteen. It is flatter on that side. You can kind of see the ring. Um, it's convex on this side, but this one will hold a little bit more water. You can also see the top has that, uh, that type of chain on it. It still has a swivel. Uh, yeah, you can see it better here. It still has this type of ring clasp swivel. Now this one did not come with a rubber gasket. I assume it probably came with one, but still the same aluminum topper. Now if we go back to the 1920s and before, a lot of the canteens that they offered had uh, corks in them. And I do not own any of those. I don't know if I'm going to purchase any of those because I already got a ton of canteens, as you can tell. Uh, I only need three of them, one for each of my boys and one for myself. So chances are I'm probably not going to buy one of those. And you know, having the screw cap is pretty nice, to be honest. It's a nice little feature that they improved upon. So there you have it. Those are the canteens that I have collected that were available from the 1930s um, and the late 1920s. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any information that you would like to share with me about the canteens, please do. I'd appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys stopping by. You watching this clip. This is about an 18 minute video, which is almost a record for me. It's pretty short compared to what my normal ones are. Please like, please share my videos. Please subscribe if you like this. Um, there's more in the future to come and there's definitely plenty in the back that I've already done. Have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones and take care.